hello and today we're looking at further into our astrological uh, concepts of the universe and how the aspects of it work um, so we can apply it better to modern day understanding. And we've been looking at the zodiac is specifically and how each of the sections relate to the previous video of the elements. Um, as we noticed in our last video with the elements, each aspect actually represents a lot more than what we truly thought. Um, the original concept of the elements is far deeper and uh, more applicable to multiple realities of vibrational states than we potentially would have first thought. Um, but today we're looking at water and how water um, actually applies to the uh, zodiacal signs. So we mentioned in our last video that looking at each individual of the 12 zodiacal signs and the way it's portrayed in um, kind of more modern literature, it can be quite complex, it can be quite confusing. As we look at each of the individual sign with a specific um, kind of set of attributes where um, according to all different planets it means this and it can mean this and also this and Actually, that's not the case. It's the zodiacal signs themselves have a specific um, concept, a symbolism, which can then be applied to everything else rather than the other way around. And when we look at water, we saw that water was the queen, or the concept of the queen of the cups. And water represents change because it's an active form of an element, just like fire. The opposite is fire, the king where the fire in the king was the external change, water was the internal change. And we gave the example of the sun. And for example, the sun's light is an exothermic reaction. It's energy, solar energy, that gets passed onto anything around it, which creates effect and change. Whereas change within the sun itself is the um, constant um, fusion of the hydrogen helium atoms, making energy, which creates the sun's life. And that then creates the external effects as well equally. So when we're looking at internal factors within the human body, we're looking at both physical and mental level. On a physical level, it's anything that goes into the body to create change. So air, food, water, um, chemicals, uh, absolutely anything that goes into the body to create change within the body to make it work. It's its essence, it's its life, it's its meaning. In the mind, it's any sensitive data um, that comes from the external world into the mind to create change. So it is the mind itself also. It's everything that makes up the conscious and subconscious mind. And that change internally creates you as an individual. And that's what water is. It's a look internal to create change. When we look at a city, it's anything within the city that creates change. Externally, we're trading, we're conquering, we're expanding, we're creating networks, we're communicating. But the city itself, within its borders and defined boundaries, has change going on internally to structure it, to make it work. And that is like a body or a mind, it's its essence, it's its life, and that's water inwards looking. So depending on which cosmic scale you're looking at or working with, your focus of subject of study dictates what becomes an internal change and external change. And this is the concept of the sun and the moon, external, internal, the king and the queen, the, the fire and the water, um, the wands and the cups. And so water is anything internal uh, change. And Typically water is associated with psychic action as well because obviously the mental side of things is a mental development creates psychic or psychological effects and change. Um, so people based more water, um, elemental based, tend to be more uh, mental focused, internally um, kind of psychologically driven, uh, making changes internally. So withdrawn um, and kind of um, uh, you know, they're not making change externally as much. So people like writers, um, you know, anyone that's making kind of um, philosophical uh, discoveries or mental developments is all considered to be water-based. Obviously, there's an element of everything inside. 
So where does that bring us with the um, zodiac? But as we mentioned in our last video, all these actions of elements have three parts. It's a story, and we can attribute those three parts to beginning, middle, and end. So the beginning is called the cardinal effect. The middle is the fixed effect, and the, the end or the towards the end is the mutable effect. And just like we had with fire, there's three parts to every process. And with water being a concept of change, it's exactly the same, but internally. So the cardinal effect of water, which relates to the cancer um, sign, or zodiacal sign, is all to do with beginning the change, planning the change, and gathering what you need for the internal change. So if we're changing the mind, for example, it's making sure we have that data available to change the mind, to change someone's perspective, to change your point of view. If you don't have facts and information or the sensory data to make those changes, change cannot be possible. If we don't intend on making the change, then also change will not take place. When we always say it's you that has to walk through the door, you can only be shown the way. That's very true because yes, we can teach you how to do it, but you have to have the willpower to make change, to want to change. So it's like changing a life habit is an internal change when you're thinking about mindset because if you don't yes you can remove all the cigarettes from the area but if you don't want to stop smoking then you will just go out and buy more but you will have to want to make that internal change to <clears throat> make that decision and that's part of the internal water process the actual change itself is the event of a point where it switches over so that change has been made internally and that decision has been made it's added to your center of self your self-worth you have become that change and the mutable effect is all the small changes the ripples effect after that change took place internally so for example now i've decided to stop smoking that decision has been made that is now part of me i've overcome that that's the fix but now it's all the little things. Well, what do I do with that extra time? What do I do with that extra money? What do I want to do with those things? What do I want to do instead? Um, how does this affect me internally? What opportunities does this give me? All these little things have a mutable effect after the, after the, the major event and the change. And these are the three parts of the zodiac. This is what they represent symbolically as part of a universal cycle. So the Cancer Zodiacal sign is to do with Water Cardinal, the internal effect and the beginning of it. Scorpio is the fixed kind of central event itself of the internal change. And Pisces is all the effects afterwards, the observations and the small changes to adjustments after the fact for the water internal change. So you have Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, the beginning, middle and end of the water process of internal change. And just as we mentioned in fire, there is a hidden fourth part to water, which is the passive part. So as we saw, the three zodiacal signs represent the um, active phase of water, the more condensed form where it's in ascendance, it's in active form. All the other nine zodiacal positions represent the passive part of water, where water exists, but is not in its active state. And that's, so it's one portion so it's one quarter but spread over nine zodiacal signs whereas the other three in ascendance are actually three quarters but over three zodiacal signs it's more condensed it's more um, energetic it's more active it's more in, in power and that's the fourth hidden sign so there's actually four quarters to water just as there is four directions four elements four parts of the world, four directions, all that kind of thing, four seasons. Just one is not active, but actually takes up three, three quarters of the whole zodiac. Whereas the other three signs um, are just in effect in those three small periods of time, but in a more concentrated fashion. So much like the tides, uh, it's like a high tide, whereas the other nine represent kind of a low tide in effect. But that's what the three elements, uh, what the element of water represents. It's the concept of internal change. And whenever internal change takes place, there is always a beginning, a middle, and an end. 
and that's what those three zodiacal signs represent Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, beginning, middle and end of water and if we understand that then we can use it to its more beneficial prospects when we begin to apply the um, other aspects of the planets within it so if we understand that, the overall map and the process of cycles and energies and um, action and reaction in the universe within the mind, the body, um, the solar system and all things, all levels of reality, then we can begin to see what is happening in the universe at all times. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you join me for the next video um, as we'll look at the next part of the zodiacal signs and the elements together. Um, so please like, subscribe and follow and uh, we'll continue on our journey of understanding. So for now, thank you very much and bye bye. Hello and today we're looking further into our astrological uh, concepts of the universe and how the aspects of it work um, so we can apply it better to modern day understanding. We've been looking at